Uh, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Renee Burgoyne. I'm Deputy Director of the Lucre Commission. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is the regulatory process for a painting permit. Uh, just so I know we have a lot of different historic districts on the line tonight. Just so you know, you only need a paint permit in the French Quarter. So what I'm talking about is very specific, um, unlike the different types of paint um, that Joey was just talking about, just so that gives you a little idea. Um, again, we are the mm. only historic district that requires a permit for painting. Um, the French Quarter, uh-oh, is it working? Sorry, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna give a little lead in, so no big deal. Uh, the French the Quarter, <laughs> since the French Quarter is the oldest neighborhood, um, arguably the oldest neighborhood in the city, it's a living neighborhood and we want people to have choices. We don't want them to feel that they're just really hemmed in by these colors. Um, we do want for people to know, Brooke, let me see if I can share, hold on. I got it, I got it. I just opened the wrong one, I'm sorry. I opened up the first version. Perfect. <laughs> um, we want people to know that, you know, they do have some choices and they are not just stuck with one palette. Um, we can go to the next one. So there are two types of permits that you can apply for. And right now you can do both of those permits on the One Stop app. Uh, so we're gonna do a matching, match existing colors, or you're gonna change the colors. Both are the exact same permit. It's a VCC paint permit application. And you can find that on the One Stop app. It's actually the only one that says VCC next to it. Um, if you're filling out, filling out building permits or general work or anything like that, that's gonna go through um, the building department before it comes to us. So when you go to the One Stop app, it is literally the only one that will say VCC. Um, so you're gonna go in there, you're gonna create a login, um, and then it's gonna ask you uh, what you see here on this screen. Um, you know, walls, shutters, doors and windows, uh, trim, ironwork, other surfaces. Other surfaces can be things like decking or stairs, um, different features. Let's say you have gingerbread uh, featured on the front of your house. Uh, you have a later home, uh, things like that. You can include those. You can go to the next one, Brooke. Um, so if you know the colors, this is really easy. You're just gonna put it in there. A lot of people that have, owned in the French Quarter for a long time. They know exactly what color, they know the manufacturer, they haven't changed the colors in a really long time. They can just plug it all in there. If you don't know the colors and you're just doing a color match um, and you're gonna take that down to, you know, home paint or wherever you're going to get your paint, you're gonna take your paint chip, they're gonna color match and then they're gonna give you your paint can. And on the top of the paint can is gonna be a color match formula. And they're always going to put like a little dot on the top as a swatch so you know it's in each can. When you apply for your paint permit, just take a picture of that, attach it to the paint permit application. It'll come to us. We'll know that you're painting to match existing. Simple, simple, simple. I'm the one that writes all the paint permits. I uh, usually get it just depending on what my queue looks like, anywhere from three days to five, just depending. Um, but that is super easy, no big deal. Um, just a very simple permit that we can help you with. A paint permit also covers um, things like, you know, a little bit of woodwork, caulking, things that Joey was talking about, caulking, uh, cracks in stucco, things like that. It will be covered under your paint permit. So that'll be in there as well. The other type of paint permit is if you are deciding to change things. So this is where it gets a little more complicated and people start to get a little bit more freaked out. It's the exact same process on one stop. You're gonna go in. Um, I believe it asks you, if I'm correct, it asks you existing color and then it asks you proposed color in yes. the detail page. Um, so you would put the existing color. Um, and if you don't know the exact color, let's say you just put yellow or brown or what have you. And then you would put the proposed color. And for the proposed color, we would need the actual name of the color and the manufacturer. Um, if you are just sort of pulling this out of the dark, that's not really the way to go about this. Uh, the very first step to changing the color on your house or business 
would be the next slide, Brooke, would be um, going finding out the age of your structure. And you can find that either at uh, vucre.nola.gov or uh, at hnoc.org. Either one of these two websites, you can plug in your address very easily. And then it'll give you the age of your building. It'll also very handily give you the rating of your building, which is also pretty important if you ever want to make any changes to the exterior of your building. So once you find out the age, the next thing you're gonna do is go to our guidelines, which you'll see here on the next slide. Uh, you can see it's broken down um, into each time period. So you would sort of plug in your date and then figure out a very broad range of colors that you may be able to use. Obviously, as Michael was talking about earlier, you can see from 1820s to 1840s, very limited. Again, going right back to what he's saying historically. Um, it was cheaper. There weren't as many things available. Uh, New Orleans wasn't quite yet this cosmopolitan city open to the world. Uh, not that many things were here. So you can see progressively as you go through, you get more colors, more variations. Um, we do not like to tell people, you know, it can only be this one color and that's it. I, there are so many shades, as Joey was saying earlier, of one color. We want people to have some choice. We don't want them to feel hemmed in at all. This is your home. You're gonna be living there. Um, there's some compromise to be made between the two of us. And I, I think that that can be done. And we all want, we want homeowners to be happy. So on the next slide, so once you've done that, so, so far you have, uh, the date of your building, you figured out what colors are available, and now you're doing your color selection. I'm more than happy to help. Um, all you have to do is email me or email staff. They'll send it to me. I can give you ideas where to start. I do highly recommend sort of starting with the Benjamin Moore Historic colors. If you have no idea what you're doing, it just sort of gives you a place to start, and you can kind of go from there. Next um, Tuesday, we're going to unveil a color collection that'll give you an even better place to start. Yes. Next, next Thursday, Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday, we will <laughs> unveil the French Quarter collection for Benjamin Moore. Um, but it sort of gives you a place to start. If you think you want a purple house, well, you probably can't have a purple house in the French Quarter, but you might be able to have a light lavender house. <laughs> um, you know, if you think you want a greenhouse, you probably have a structures greenhouse you know you, but you can there are variations on color as michael you know explained earlier um so in the next slide you'll see i always tell people don't get stuck on any one color choose about four or five colors and then what you need to do is go and get some little pots of color and then you need to go and paint them on your actual house um stucco masonry wood every color will look different on every different material the way the sun hits it this building for instance here uh actually picked those colors that were on the bottom and they were the one on the top they looked completely different at different times of the day they look completely different than the swatch they look completely different than it looked in the little pot of color um, so we're totally fine with that. If you want to paint a bunch of swatches, go ahead. I would rather see you get it right. I don't want to see you paint your house or get halfway through and then realize that you hate the color. Um, that's, so we're, we're totally fine with that. Just communicate with us. That's all. <laughs> and then the next slide, again, you'll see here, it just looks different on different materials. And by different materials, I mean, even your shutters too, if you're thinking that you're gonna use, you know, the color down the street that you saw on someone else's shutters and you need to try it. It might not look the same. It just might not. Uh, trim color, all of it. You should try every color that you're thinking. And then in the next slide, uh, once you've done that and once I've seen it, we've talked about it, everyone's happy. I can fill out the permit very quickly and get it to you and then go about your business. Um, again, we do recommend just a little bit of time. Don't call and say you're changing all the colors and the guy's gonna be there tomorrow. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> some of this takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, um, but you know, it's all possible and we just want you guys to be happy with it as well. So just remember, we're all here to answer your questions and staff is always available. And I'm open for any questions. Anybody have questions for Renee? Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Yeah. This actually got the address as I was talking to you about yesterday. It was 941 St. Anne, the Purple mm -hmm. House of Porter. Um, I had talked with Brooke about it, how that house became those colors of purple. Was it because in the 80s, 90s that it was colored that way and then kind of grandfathered in or how that permit went about? It's just what, I'm sorry, purple. Maddie, what was the address one more time? I'm sorry. Um, 941 St. Anne. It's just- sorry. I want to look it up because I don't- I'm so curious about how that purple came to be. It also could be, um, Hold on one second. I want to be able to look at it while I'm talking to you. Sorry. Just give me one second because I'm not sure. Uh, they, <laughs> this house has a lot. So because this house is later, okay. they have a lot more freedom in what they can do. Um, I will tell you our guidelines have changed and I will also tell you that there were a few colorblind people <laughs> that worked at the VCC <laughs> that permitted some things that might not actually get through these days. But it's a you know it's beautifully done and they maintain it and it it fits with that time period. It's just a little bit it's an it's a newer home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's be it's great. Yeah. Sorry, I had to look that up. I apologize. I my French Quarter brain. <laughs> I know, and new in the French Quarter is still not new. For no, other no, places. no, and it's not yeah. new. Yeah. yeah. When I say new, please know that I mean like early night, you know, late nineteenth, <laughs> early twentieth century. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. still one hundred and twenty years old. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you, Renee. <laughs> no problem, Maddie. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions about permitting? I see a, I see a hand. Is it? Oh, oh, a question I, yeah, that's me. Um, what I was just one curious about trends. Do you see certain trends coming about now, or did you notice any trends at certain periods of time where 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 people just kept painting white or green or? Do you mean do you mean the gingerbread trim or do you mean like give me a give me a style of well, I mean almost anything like um, or it do just you seems mean like means like cast iron it seems like they're all black or they're all Paris green with the cast iron or the wrought iron and yes. then maybe certain trims you know it's see the the if it's a wooden house it's white with green shutters or you know that it just seems like and again, that's going to go back to that slide that we showed about the time periods, the aging. When you find out the date and then you go and look, certain dates, again, like Michael was talking about earlier, I'm not sure if you were on the call, um, but certain, certain time periods, more things were available. So certain paints were used more. Um, also, Creoles were notoriously pretty thrifty. Um, they used a lot of what they had lying around. Um, they weren't going to go out and buy the most expensive paint. So, you know, what Michael was kind of talking about earlier, uh, indigo, you're not going to paint your house indigo because that's the most expensive. So greens and whites, um, if you see up in the top left corner of this slide, um, those colors were just easier to come by and cheaper. Bottom line, cheaper. Yeah, and I guess cost probably even today is a prevailing factor. 100%. And that's, you know, that's something I, I wanted to say on what Joey was saying earlier. We love mineral paints, um, <laughs> but they're expensive. And the best use of mineral paints um, that I've seen have been when people have completely restuccoed 
their their buildings and then they come back with a mineral paint and it is fantastic it's just it's beautiful it's it's the way it's meant to be it's finished um but it it is costly yeah 100 percent and then it looks like we have another question from Ann, Miss Ann Finney. Hi, good evening, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much for doing this. This is really great information. And, and just really, Renee, I would agree with you with the mineral paints. Um, yeah. But the, life, the lifetime of it, um, you know, it's something to, to consider. 100%. Um, the cost, is, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, and I'm sorry if I missed this, um, when you said VCC available on Thursdays on the slide, um, what, I know people are still working from home, but um, what what does that mean exactly available on Thursdays? We're, so we are actually back in the office and we have been. Um, however, I don't, <laughs> it's gonna sound terrible, but I just, there's no reason for anyone to have to come to City Hall. You shouldn't have to pay to park. You shouldn't have to, drag yourself up to the seventh floor. Um, so I am available on Thursdays in the French Quarter. Um, I've, Brooke has allowed me to use her office if I need a spot, but usually what I do is meet people on site. So if there's something you wanna talk about and we can actually look at it together. Um, for instance, tomorrow I have like four site visits <laughs> all over the French Quarter, but it's worked out really well. Um, to be able to use the foundation office as sort of a home base and then be able to be accessible um, to the public. And then obviously any other day of the week, we can always make an appointment. Um, I just, it, it's easier for people to sometimes just be at home and I stop by their house and, you know. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Um, and then really quick, the, the Vucare virtual library, is that the VCC's library? And, and do y'all, I mean. The foundation did that for us. So they took, um, they, Brooke, if you wanna explain it a little bit sure. better. Sure. Yeah, I actually made the virtual library and then I'm now as the executive director expanding it. Um, it's, it's funded by the foundation, but it's an online archive, a growing online archive of the VCC's files. So as we raise money, it allows us to go scan more items and bring those to the public. But those That's are fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Those are free I, online. They're public property. They'll never have a paywall. For anything um, that hasn't been digitized yet, is it possible for the public to come in and do any kind of research or, or make a request? It is 100%. Um, we usually, you can, you can email us. Uh, make a request, give us an address, you know, whatever. Um, sometimes people think that we have things that we don't have. <laughs> um, yeah. we, because we're a regulatory agency, um, a lot of what we have is kind of boring permits. Um, and a lot of the paper stuff that we have only goes back maybe, in some cases it goes back to the 80s, but in most cases I would say 80s, 90s, some cases the 60s. Um, but uh, the most important thing that we had in there was the photographs, which Brooke digitized. But the the paper stuff, you're more than welcome to email us and say, hey, this is the address I'm looking for. I would advise specifying what you're looking for and we can look for it before you come down there. <laughs> okay, okay. that Just, sounds great. Yeah, sometimes people think that we control more than we do and they, <laughs> They think that we have things that we don't have. Okay, fair and enough. And they're disappointed. Right, thank yeah. <laughs> thank you very well, much thank you for all of this. No problem. no problem. And like Michael mentioned, there is just an, an, an incredible wealth of knowledge at the Notorial Archives, yes. which are also open to the public um, right across Poitras from City Hall. So, um, that's, is Chelsea Richardson still in charge of that? It's the it's under the office of the civil clerk and it's open to the public and the information there you will have to have the staff help guide you through it but it is fantastic sorry miss bruno i see you um you're up <laughs> are mineral paints what are mineral paints and is it okay to paint your stucco if it hasn't been painted 
Uh, in the French Quarter, no. <laughs> in, the, in the French Quarter, in, in the French Quarter, you are not allowed to paint anything that has not been painted uh, without it going to the architecture committee. And the only way the architecture committee would allow it is if we have historic evidence that it had been painted. So let's say um, you have a brick wall that you want to paint. Uh, we can't allow that at staff. It would have to go to the architecture committee. And then the architecture committee would have to determine, we'd have to, there'd have to be some sort of evidence that it had been painted for them to allow it. Does that make sense? Sorry. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, there's a lot of feedback when you're not muted, so. I was just saying that, um, it seemed like the example we use about paint samples was that unpainted stucco? That was brand new stucco. They had restuccoed the whole building. I see. I see. They had, pulled off, they had pulled off the old failing stucco and restuccoed the entire building. Wow. And re and repointed the brick as well. What is a mineral paint? I don't know what that is. Uh, is that Joey question? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so it's a, it's it's like it says. It's it's actually a little stone is potassium silicate so it looks it would be a, a sand ground down from and it would be in different pigments to create those colors and put together with a with a binder so that it, it allows it to uh to be to be rolled or brushed out onto a a, a masonry surface but the biggest uh benefit from a mineral paint is the permeability or vapor transfer like we were talking about much higher than any other product that we uh would would be able to, to sell on that type of application and it lasts for a very long time. The, uh, the caveat is it's more expensive. It's uh, about two to three times more expensive, uh, but does does last for a very long time. Excellent uh, color uh, retention and uh, it's only available in flats. So it's designed for stucco and masonry surfaces. So Ms. Bruno, to answer your question that, that one building that I showed you the example of that they redid all the stucco. We suggested a mineral paint or a lime wash or something more natural, but it's a huge building. <laughs> Just it's not cost effective. Did that answer? Perfect. Does anybody else have questions? I love this discussion. I don't see any more raised hands. Well, then I am going to give me a couple of days. I'm a one woman show, but I am going to put this up on our YouTube channel so that everybody can reference it at will. I will, <clears throat> I will share uh, Michael's PDF and the color chart and make sure I get all the information to appropriately credit not only Michael and Cypress Conservation, but also the Tulane program. I love when the stuff that I do gets my name put on it appropriately. And if you have questions about any of this, please send us emails. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a good night and stay safe. We managed to keep our power on. Woo! Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank